if you want to enjoy some of the latest GPUs, there's a pretty good chance your computer is already outdated. The most important items are going to be your CPU and your power supply. And there are other miscellaneous items like maybe the NVMe PCIe Generation 5, maybe your RAM. Those are smaller considerations. We're going to focus on the CPU and the power supply, and we're going to answer the question, is your PC outdated? Now, the new GPUs from both NVIDIA and AMD, they're just reaching higher frame rates than we've ever seen before and in a lot of cases cpu bottlenecks are becoming very serious issues now we're going to talk about only the new gpus so we'll ignore rtx you know 3000 and amd rx 6000 on the other side of the coin there certainly are new hardware releases in both cpus and power supplies that are definitely worth a look if you're thinking of upgrading your system it may be a good idea just to jump into the new technology rather than save a few bucks right now because you're going to future-proof yourself much more. Let's talk about the CPUs. There have been a lot of great CPUs released recently. Obviously, the 7800X3D, that's going to be one of the main CPUs. For gaming, this is going to be spectacular. It's probably the best CPU that you can buy. And of course, it kind of replaces the 5800X3D, which, by the way, is still a great CPU. If that's the one you have, unless you really want a couple of, you know, Know, percentage points, I think you're probably fine with something like that. Even people that have fast CPUs like a 5900X, obviously 3900X, even like a 7900X, they may benefit from upgrading to some of the newer CPUs that are out. Even on Intel, we have some very fast CPUs. The 13900KS, for example, probably not worth it unless you're a really, really, you know, niche enthusiast that you want to hit over six gigahertz, but it's way too expensive for what you're getting there. Very small performance gains. You're better off just with a regular 13900K. And of course, you can look at the other options like 13700K and the 13600K, which in a lot of cases, you're going to get almost as good performance and save a considerable amount of money. The GPU that you most need to be careful with is going to be first the 4090 for those that have it. You would assume that some people that buy the 4090 already will have a very fast CPU, but it's not always true. What if you have a 4090 and you just happen to have a you know high-end 5950X? Well, that's a fantastic CPU. If you want better gaming performance, no doubt you're probably going to see a nice benefit in going with something like a 7800X3D, especially 1440p and around there. 4K is interesting because in the past, generally, you would never bottleneck the CPU at 4K because, look, the load is going to be completely on the GPU. But something like the 4090 is so fast that in some games, you can definitely have some CPU-limited scenarios, especially people that play stuff like Flight Simulator 2020, definitely somewhere where you want to take a look and upgrade your CPU. If you go down the stack a little bit and you're talking about the AMD 7900 XTX, 7900 XT, and the RTX 4080, basically the same will apply a little bit less. Like you can get away with not having maybe the fastest like X3D processor, but if you don't want to bottleneck your system, it's probably a better idea to keep your CPU as fast as you can possibly get it. As we start to reach GPUs that are coming out now, like the RTX 4070, and to a lesser extent, the 4070 Ti, these aren't going to be as hampered by the CPU. They're going to be a little bit more of like a classic GPU, if you will. If you use the example of a 4090 as an outlier, the 4070 still is going to be a little bit more of like a traditional performance where you can get away with like a 5900X, unless you're playing at like 1080p or something like that. Even 1440p, I wouldn't worry about it nearly as much. So as you can see, the best GPUs require now the best CPUs if you don't really want to bottleneck. I remember once I threw even a Threadripper CPU and I was testing, you know, a 4090. I was shocked at the performance difference between something like that and then I put a proper gaming CPU on it like, uh, you know, one of the faster Ryzen chips and it was amazing the difference in frames per second with the same GPU. That's because, you know, Threadripper not really meant for gaming and it was severe lacking even in 1440p it was a massive difference 
That's something you want to keep in mind. The faster hardware that you have, you're more than likely going to need these faster CPUs. So if you're upgrading, who knows what next generation is going to bring. And if you plan on keeping your CPU a couple of years, it may be a good idea to pick up like a 7800X3D or something like that. Or on the Intel side, 13900K, even though Intel is going to be more obsolete for that particular chipset because next upgrade, they're going to completely change the socket. So you're going to need new motherboards. That's why most people now they do seem to go more towards am5 because that's just going to last a lot longer not to mention that the 7800x3d really is one of the best cpus that you can get right now so if your cpu is okay how about your power supply i mean it's going to be the same story here if you have a really expensive gpu like a 4090 more than likely you're going to want to make sure that you have a minimum of 850 watts and above preferably a thousand watts doesn't hurt to have like a 1200 watt power supply. Importantly here, however, you have to start to think if ATX 3.0, that's the new standard that's coming out, may be something that you want to think about. If you have to buy a new power supply, for example, recently Be Quiet sent over to me their Dark Power 13, as well as their Pure Power. Um, this is going to be a thousand watt power supply, and for the Dark Power 13, 850 watts. They sent these over, and these are both ATX 3.0. What's the main difference? PCIe Generation 5, and you get the adapter cable. That's already the 12 volt high power connector. If you guys have a 4090 or 4080, you'll know that sort of the mess of cables that you get having to use that little adapter, especially with the 4090, where it splits into needing four eight pin PCIe connectors. It's really, really annoying when you're doing a build and it's hard to really do something that looks nice unless you go out and you spend your money on like cable mod custom cables or something like that where then it's going to be a little bit better you're going to have one clean cable but some of these new atx 3.0 power supplies like that dark power 13 they come with that uh, you know rated up to 600 watts they come with that cable already so basically it's just one cable you plug it in your power supply side and then you plug in that one cable into that special 12 volt high power connector on your gpu for me if you're going to buy a new power supply it just makes sense to look for ATX 3.0. More than likely, of course, you're going to have to spend a little bit more as they're new and they're coming out. And then you're not really going to find any like on the used market because they're so new. But that's certainly something to consider. Not only the type ATX 3.0 and make sure you have that new cable, but also get the most amount of wattage that you can and the higher quality is always going to be very important like that dark power 13 it's titanium it's going to be more efficient typically they're just built a lot better if you're running these high-end components you don't want your power supply to ever be a bottleneck or ever take out your components due to some issue you don't necessarily have to get titanium but at least gold and above especially if you're playing with some of these much more power hungry gpus like 4090 4080 even the amd gpus even though they have traditional 8 pin connectors definitely good to get that new technology as well as you go down the product stack of gpus a little bit the same thing applies with the cpus it's not necessarily as important to upgrade your power supply but definitely a good idea if you want to future proof yourself like for example the 4070 founders edition still comes with that nvidia adapter but if you get like an aib model like from asus or gigabyte you're more than likely going to have just a regular eight pin power connector that any traditional power supply will have now if you have an atx 2.0 like an older power supply that pretty much everybody does obviously people have been using them without any issues on like the 4090 and 4080 they work fine but as we go forward and if you do have to upgrade it's just a better idea much cleaner cabling i mean in the box you already get that one cable so you don't have to worry about you know splicing them into four different cables and having so many cables running around and that cable is designed for this very standard so that's certainly something to keep in mind with new gpus coming out and not only the ones that have been released but remember the the mid-range that we have now like the 4070 and even from amd when we 
eventually see the 7800 XT, they're going to start to be as powerful a lot of times as what we saw last generation. So that's going to have a huge impact on both your CPU and your power supply. Obviously, there are other elements in your build that could definitely use an upgrade. Everybody should have an NVMe drive. You don't need PCIe Generation 5 right now. That's very new. The drives are barely being released now, but certainly nice to have because in the future you could have like direct storage. You can have your NVMe drive actually helping out the performance in your games, even though that's not something we're really seeing right now. Let's say like on PlayStation 5, that's a technology that they want to use, but eventually that's something that's going to start to come out on more and more games. If you have a motherboard that's already, you know, PCIe generation five, even though you can't saturate it now with GPUs or NVMe drives, certainly something nice to have in the future. Keeping an open mind to the future all is pretty good because you may save money down the road by buying something that's a little bit better now all right guys let me know what system you're running now and if it's something that you think is limited by your current hardware depending on what gpu that you may have remember to subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next video